How can I be happy? Some atheists known as humanists believe that the purpose of life is to be happy. They believe that meaning in life is created from what you enjoy most, whether it be your family or your career, or even simple pleasures such as cooking or indeed gardening. They believe that there is no God who created us and no purpose to our lives beside what we enjoy most. The problem that believers in God have with this view is that this is exactly what we believe is wrong with the world. The deforestation and destruction of our planet is a perfect example. The companies involved in deforestation do so because it is money that makes them happier than taking care of the environment. Is this, then, what humanism advocates? Well-known humanists such as Stephen Fry would say that what is right is whatever limits suffering and promotes well-being, and what is wrong is the very opposite. But when we examine this position, we find that it doesn't really make any sense. This is because, though humanists do believe that such crimes are wrong, humanists also believe that the notion of right and wrong does not exist outside of our own minds. They believe that there is nothing outside of us that determines what is right and wrong. Each mind has its own notion of right and wrong, they say. This means that each person can have a different definition of right and wrong, which is the same as saying that there is nothing which is objectively right or wrong. Rather, there is only a perspective or an illusion created by our brain chemicals. Humanists believe that each person has a different notion of right and wrong because they believe that each person is unique in tastes, priorities, preferences, and indeed in our goals. While no one denies human uniqueness, humanists ignore the fact that the vast majority of things about us are the same. For example, we all share DNA as the building blocks of our lives. The chemical composition of our bodies and minds are identical, and the basic necessities of life such as food, water, and the desire for procreation are all shared. Many psychological concepts such as goodness, love, friendship, justice, and equality are similarly shared. No one needs to go to university to learn these. Rather, we know what is right when we see it. The humanist belief that each right and wrong are only illusions of the mind have some serious implications. This means that the racism and oppression of the slave trade is only wrong from our perspective, and not actually or objectively wrong. It means that the killing of 13 million people by the Nazi party was not wrong for them, but only is wrong from our perspective now. Similarly, the killing of homosexual people in some countries today is not wrong for the killers, as they simply have a different perspective to us. Another question that is born from this is that if morality is only an individual perspective, then what right does one person have to enforce their view of morality over someone else? In short, what makes one person's right more right? Though humanism may not make sense, does it however work? Does a humanist who aims to limit suffering and promote well-being really lead a moral life? Consider the possibility that a terrorist plot that might kill hundreds and hundreds of innocent people could be discovered and stopped simply by torturing a suspect. The humanist aims of limiting suffering and promoting well-being would be fulfilled for the vast majority of people. Can torture, then, be a good moral action? This is not just a theoretical exercise. For example, well-known atheist Sam Harris has gone on record and stated that I am one of the few people I know of who has argued in print that torture may be an ethical necessity in our war on terror. In other words, torture as a good moral action. This shows us that each person who causes suffering and hurts humanity does it in the name of humanity, by teaching themselves and others of the goodness of their purposes. As the well-known saying goes, the road to hell is indeed paved with good intentions. The 15th and 16th century Niccolo Machiavelli put it another way when he wrote that the ends justify the means. Humanism is therefore a Machiavellian philosophy that requires people only to believe they are doing good, whether they are actually or not, and thus it can be used for right or wrong equally. 
While religions are often misused for evil ends, they are misused despite clear teachings on which actions are right and which are wrong. Humanism, however, tells us to be moral without ever even explaining what morality means. What then does religion teach about the moral life? And what does it teach about how to lead a happy life? Religion teaches that atheism doesn't just get rid of one god, but in actual fact creates many more. In fact, it creates seven billion gods with each person as a god unto themselves. Religion teaches that right and wrong do exist outside of our own minds and are fixed. This is because there is a god who created us and whose perspective on right and wrong is fixed. Right and wrong are not mere perspectives or illusions, as some humanists may tell you, but a type of intrinsic knowledge within us. What is right and wrong is intimately related to what our Creator has set as our purpose in life. What right do we have to set our own purpose when we did not come into this world of our own accord, nor shall we leave this world by our own decision? Religion teaches that our purpose in life is to come to know and develop a relationship with our Creator. The best way to do this is by speaking to God through prayer and by taking God as our example. Just as God has created blessings for all creatures such as the sun and the moon and indeed the entire ecosystem, similarly humans should seek to be good to others and to cultivate relationships of love with one another. We know what is right by knowing God. Religion therefore doesn't concern itself with teaching people simply to live happily, because a life focused on personal happiness is a self-centered one. Religion teaches us to ask, how can I make others happy, by both sharing in their happy moments and also in their suffering, and by easing their burdens. This is why I invite you not to a self-centered life of humanism, but to a fulfilled life of belief in God, for it is in this that there is peace of mind for yourself and for the whole wide world.